What's up guys, we are back and today I'm going to bring another tip that you must be aware of before applying to the exam. So let's check it out, let's not lose any more time. Alright guys, so here we are in today's video, we're going to be talking about microscopic structures, okay? We're going to be talking about cell size and why does this matter to the IMAT. So we're going to understand the scale, magnifications and diagrams. The reason why I'm bringing this video is because if you grab the past exams from the IMAT from 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, you're going to find questions just like the ones I'm going to show you just now. But there have been a little gap, okay? The past three years of the exams, there wasn't one question. Uh, from this topic, which makes me think that we might be might, might be seeing something like this and I want to make sure that you're prepared and you don't panic because it's not complicated. It's just going to require a little bit of knowledge of math uh, and physics, but it's going to be easy peasy. So, so let's jump into it. Let's stop talking and first thing first. Let's understand the surface area to the volume radio. There's a little misspelling here. It doesn't really matter. What I want you to understand is that when we think about cell, okay, as a beam, it is a 3D beam, okay, just like you just like me so we i know this is obvious but we often forget that because we are very used to see cells in books or in pictures and images and these 2d dimension kind of has some kind of limitation of our understanding of what's going on inside of the cell uh but it, it's important to keep this in mind especially when we think about the correlation between the surface of a cell and its volume okay so as you can see i brought some formulas here uh, of the volume of a sphere okay in the surface, the area, and you can see that there's a difference between them. When we're talking about the surface, okay, uh, cell will grow uh, with a square of the linear dimension. You can see it right here. And the volume, it's going to grow with a cube of that dimension. So uh, when I tell you that I'm doubling the size of a cell, that means that the volume that we're going to find inside of the cell will be way bigger than the area of that surface. I know it can sound a little bit abstract, but I'm going to give you a practical example. I used to 3D print. I used to have a 3D printer. I just sold it, but I'm going to buy a new one because it's one of my hobbies, stuff that I like to do. Okay. And when I had my 3D printer, I usually uh, tend to print to friends or friends of my friends. And well, they asked me to do something. I say, oh, no problem at all. I just draw it in the slicer and the slicer will tell me how many grams I'm going to need to print that, how long it's going to take, and I'll give the person the price. Okay. Sometimes these people will just come after me and say you know you know what i just just changed my mind i want to could, could you do it like double the size like instead of five centimeters just do it 10 is that a problem no no problem at all so the person was ex expecting uh to pay 2x okay i gave the person the price but it's not gonna be 2x okay i grab that thing i put in the slicer and i realize and it just, the software shows me okay the slicer shows me that the amount of filament the material that will produce that will print that object will be way bigger than the original one Okay, so instead of paying 10 euros, for example, for that action figure or whatever, I'm going to have to charge him like 40 euros and not 20. Okay, because uh, the volume has a different rate when it compares to the surface. All right, with that said, let's move on. We're going to find questions uh, just like this, straightforward. Okay, so like from 2023, very recent, talking about which of the following statements uh, accurately describes the surface area to volume radio in a cell growth. The first option here, the surface of area to volume radio decreases as the cell grows larger. So that's why it's important to read carefully because it is absolutely correct, this answer. It can be a little bit confusing, but our reference here first is area. That's what it shows first, okay? So this correlation area to volume will decrease as the cells grow because the volume will grow larger and the area will follow that growth in a slower speed. Letter A is what we're looking for, pretty straightforward. Let's move on. Another topic that is very important for us to be talking about is about the size of structures, of size of cells. I'm pretty sure that this image you might have seen in some point of your life. Uh, it is very common to like you, any secondary biology book, you will find this. And we usually don't really uh, pay attention to it, but it's important. It's very interesting, actually, because how small is small? You know, we know that bacteria are small. We know that mitochondria are small. Cells are small. But how small is small? And we often forget to make ourselves these questions. And it does matter if you want to be a doctor. We're going to have the atoms here, like obviously, and then we're going to have some structures like lipids, proteins, and then we're going to have something very interesting, important, and polemic that are the virus, okay? And after that, we're going to have something that we're going to call bacteria. Whoa, my mitochondria here. Yeah, it's an organelle, but it's also part of the group of bacteria. It's a, it's a distant cousin, okay? And something that is very important here that I want to call attention is that it is aligned in this specific unit here, one micrometer. We're going to talk about this in a minute, okay? Uh, but it's also very important for you to understand and to know uh, the correlation between them, okay? So we have one, 0 0.1 nanometer, one nanometer, and then as 
large as it get, we're gonna have a micrometer, we have a millimeter, and then obviously uh, we're gonna have a meter. But usually bacteria are going to stand right here between 0.5 and one micrometer. And that's important information. From all the questions that I could find from the IMAT, uh, having this information as a reference uh, was gold, okay? After that, we're gonna have cell, uh, animal cells and plant cells. They're also in the same line. But from what I know, from what I learned uh, in biology school, from what I learned from my teachers and books, usually plant cells tend to be a little bit larger and bigger than, uh, than animal cells, okay? There's a particular reason for that. They are more organized uh, when it comes up to, to comfort to my to put into compartments, the organelles, okay, like with the vacuoles and stuff like this. And animal cells, they tend to be a little bit smaller when compared to them, okay, but they're both bigger than bacteria. Uh, then we're gonna have a human egg cell, but the rest doesn't really matter. Let's just keep in mind this correlation here. Let's talk about the units. This is important for you to refresh your mind. I'm pretty sure you saw this in mathematics. Uh, but when talking about small things, we're gonna have the meter, uh, decimeter, centimeter, millimeter, micrometer, nanometer, and this doesn't matter. Okay, what is very important is the micrometer. This is going to be our reference. Usually, we're going to use this unit to compare uh, organelles, to compare the size of cells, and so on. Okay, nanometer is also important. But you can see when we go from millimeter to micrometer and then nanometer, there's a uh, 1,000 times correlation between them. Okay, so that means that one millimeter represents 1,000 micrometer. So if you're moving in, if you're moving in this direction, you're going to have to uh, multiply by a thousand. Okay, and then a thousand again and then so on. But if you're going the other way around from micrometer to millimeter, you're gonna have to split. Get a little bit confusing. It's gonna be easier uh, to understand when we look at this in practical questions. So let's just move forward. There is this question here from 2015 that I just wanted to show you. It's a question that doesn't really require any math calculation. It's just more understanding a little bit about how small is small. That says place the following structure in a human sperm cell in descending order of size. So we're gonna have mitochondria, nucleus, and ribosomes. Mitochondria are a type of bacteria, so uh, we can keep in mind that one micrometer, more or less. The nucleus and then the ribosomes. The nucleus, this is something that you, you should have in mind. It's one of the largest organelles that we have in ourselves. And well, there's a reason for that. All the DNA, all the uh, genetic material we have uh, to produce a whole bean is there, okay? Like my hair, for example, does have uh, DNA that can produce insulin, for example. Why it doesn't? Well, that's a different story. That's a different reason. But every single cell of our body has the same DNA. So it does has a very important role in a cell, and it's gonna, usually it's going to be the largest organelle. And the ribosome, on the other hand, is the opposite, okay? You can imagine, usually when you're taking a look at those schemes, you know, showing a little bit the anatomy of a cell, the ribosome is just a little dot that we can see. So you can you can imagine that the ribosome is smaller than a mitochondria. In this case, the question is asking us to put it this, uh, in a de descending order, okay? So from the largest to the smallest. So this would lead us to number two. And then, then number one, and then number three. Is there an option for that? Absolutely, two, one, three. So keep this in mind, the nucleus is very important and it's the largest organelle in the cell. Usually, usually the questions will not ask about the organelles, but could, but it will focus more in the correlation between the cells itself. There's another question here also asking you to put an order. In this case here, it asks us to put an order of increasing size, so from the smallest to the biggest. What are the options? What do we have here? E. coli, human red blood cell, and onion epidermal cell. Okay, so E. coli is a bacteria, very important for our intestine. Human red blood cell, they're a very important cell as well. Remember that does not has, has a nucleus, uh, onion epidermal cell, also very interesting. And remember that we're talking about a plant cell. So if you keep in mind that bacteria is smaller than a human cell, and usually human cells are smaller than plant cells, uh, we're going to find letter A as the option we are looking for. Now, so let's start talking about something serious here. <laughs> Don't get afraid. This is uh, not as hard as you think, okay? So understand the magnification. What is a magnification? Basically, it's how many times that we had to magnify it. How many times that we had to zoom in to see that structure at the size that we are seeing it okay this is going to be so clear for you when you start your medical school and you're going to be in a lab with a microscope in front of you so think about a magnification as uh the lens okay of a microscope uh, and there's a little formula here that you can rem uh, use and remember uh that is im okay basically the uh image size it's going to be the actual size of the structure times the magnification and then of course you can play with this and, and create this other formula here okay so the actual size it's going to be the image size okay uh divided by the magnification. So what is the image size? It's basically uh, what we see. So um, cell microscopes, usually when you, you try to take a look at what is going on there, there is a little ruler there and there's a little size just for a, a reference for you to, 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 to know or to point out. So let's say you can use that as a, as a, as a reference, for example. And I brought you one example so we could have fun together here. So a drawing of four centimeters long 
at 4,000 magnification. So we have the image size, it's a drawing, okay, that that structure, that bacteria, that whatever does not have four centimeters, but the magnification is 4,000, okay? That's why we see it at this size. So what is the actual size? Let's just go to our formula, I am. Uh, we have to remember that the unit that we're gonna use is going to be the micrometer. In order to uh, reach that, you have to remember that uh, four centimeters is 40 millimeters. And if you want to transform from millimeters to micrometers, you have to uh, multiply by a thousand. So that will be 40,000 micrometers divided by 4,000. That leads us to an actual size of 10 micrometers. Okay, let's take a look of actual questions that uh, requested this knowledge. So we have 2019 here. Uh, so an electronic microscope was used to view cells. The maximum dimension of the cell was absorbed uh, at a magnification of 30,000. Okay, the image on the electronic microscope screen show a maximum length of 30 millimeters. Okay, so that's a large magnification. Uh, electronic microscope is not the microscope that we usually find in labs. They are a very powerful microscope. They have a different way of, of, of being used, and usually they are used for stuff that are very, very tiny. You know those uh, pictures we find sometimes on, on I don't know, whenever you're studying uh, cell division, for example, and you can see the actual chromosomes being divided. We're talking about electronic microscope. That's, that's the guy. That's the guy who took the picture. Okay, so that's why we have such a large magnification. What is uh, the answer, and how can we... Uh, find that answer. Once again, we have the magnification and we have the length, okay, and it's a millimeter, thankfully. The only thing we have to do is to multiply by a thousand and divide by the magnification. Once we do that, we have the size, but there's no option here. Well, we have structures. So we have, for example, bacteria. We have a plant cell here. We have a red blood cell, animal cell, another animal cell, a neuron, a lymphocyte. So based on our previous knowledge of more or less knowing how big or small these structures are, we are able to enter this, okay? For your luck, I already did the math here. Uh, if we follow what I just said, we're going to find one micrometer. One micrometer? Wait, I remember this. We're talking about bacteria. All right, so this leads us to letter A. If you're curious to know about the size of the other structures, uh, here it is. Remember that neurons can be very large. We can have neurons the size of one meter. So it's crazy, crazy, crazy to think about that. Let's move forward. This is going to be the last question I'm going to bring to you all. Uh, I hope it was clear. Uh, if you have any questions, just fire away in the comments and let's take a look at this. So question 40 from 2020. The diagrams show five different microscope structures. The structures are not drawn. Uh, to the same scale, okay? Which of these structures is the smallest? This one is a cheeky one, okay? This is gonna give us some hustle. Uh, we have already one structure here in the micrometer uh, unit, okay? So bacteria, 0 0.5, but what about the other ones here? We have a drawn four centimeters, magnification of 4,000, six centimeters, 20,000 magnification, three centimeters, and 400. And then we have this one. This one is easy, actually. We just need to multiply by 1,000. This is gonna lead us to move three times, 140 micro. Uh, meters. So we know that this is not the answer. But how can I find the answer for the other one? Just following the same procedures that we did previously, okay? For your luck, I have already done that for you. So we're going to grab that four centimeters and we're going to convert into micrometers and divide by the magnification. Here's our answer. Same thing, three micrometers and then same thing, 75 micrometers. So from all the options we had here, the smallest one will be the one he already gave us the answer. Oh, when I did this question, I was like pissed. <laughs> but uh, you can't afford to lose a point, right? So it was worth it. 0 0.5, that is what we we're looking for. So letter E. Guys, once again, uh, I really enjoy making these videos. Uh, they can take a little bit of time I'm trying to make them short. But uh, if you have any questions, if you want me to talk about something specifically, just fire away in the comments. And if you enjoy this content, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. It's going to help me a lot and it's going to motivate me to keep going. So I really hope to see you guys.